Never underestimate the strength a person in need can find thanks to the kindness of strangers. Jim Axelrod has one woman's remarkable story. On her graduation day from Princeton in 2010, Suleika Jawad's future seemed luminous and limitless. At that age, time feels infinite. Feels like, you know, you'll, you'll figure it out. You have time to try things, to experiment. Um, but as it turned out, I didn't have time. 11 months later, a leukemia diagnosis robbed her of that time. She said they're gonna schedule, they've scheduled the bone marrow biopsy for Friday. All that promise replaced by a brutal chemo regimen that would only provide a one in three chance of survival. I remember going on social media and seeing photographs of my friends going to parties and starting you know, new jobs and traveling. It really felt like my life was over before it had really begun. Rare moments of joy, like when an old pal from Music Cam showed up at her cancer ward with his band, were overwhelmed by her new reality. What do you remember about how you were able to process it as it was happening? I'm not sure. I did a lot of processing. Uh, the overwhelm was so great that I was in a state of total shock. Isolated, disoriented, and voiceless, Suleika began to write, finding something steadying in her daily journal entries. An act of affirmation. It was also an act of imagination. Um, and what I realized in that writing is that really survival is its own kind of creative act. Posting them on a blog, she caught the eye of a New York Times editor who offered her a column and video series, Life Interrupted. My priorities yes. are different. My goals for the future are different. I see the world differently. I see myself differently. My column launched while I was in the bone marrow transplant unit, and I remember waking up the next morning and opening my inbox and seeing hundreds of emails from strangers all around the world. Overnight, Soleika had what she had yearned for most, purpose. There's a photograph of me in the transplant unit where I have a vomit bucket under one arm. I have my laptop on my knees and I'm crying, not because, you know, I'm about to have a bone marrow transplant, but because I've missed a deadline. Setting a standard of multitasking. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or workaholism, I don't know. <laughs> Can you tell me your name and date of birth? Abdel Jawad Suleika, 7588. After a traumatic three and a half year ordeal of treatment, including that last chance bone marrow transplant that carried a life threatening risk of heart failure and organ damage, Suleika beat the odds. She was cancer free, no longer sick, but not exactly well either. I never felt more lost. I couldn't returned to the person I'd been pre-diagnosis. I was no longer a cancer patient, but I had no idea who I was. But you knew that you didn't want your life to be defined by the worst thing that had ever happened to you. Yeah. I would have to figure out a way um, not to move on, because I don't think that's possible, but to move forward. I found myself returning to this big wooden box. Um, that was filled with letters that I'd received from all kinds of people over the years. From that chest, she chose 22 letters and hit the road with her dog Oscar for a 100-day, 15,000-mile reset ritual, meeting strangers she felt had something to teach her about healing, like a professor named Howard in Ohio. You get immersed in life again. Let's face it, life can be good a joyful, fearless teenage survivor in Florida named Unique. I want to like go on a food binge and just eat crazy things like octopus. To imagine yourself in the future is a radical act of hope. 
and I want to be more like that girl. <laughs> An inmate in Texas named Little GQ, who'd written from death row and affirmed the power of connection. And one of the first things he said to me was, you know, what did you do during all those years in the hospital? And I said, I got really, really good at Scrabble. And he looked at me and he kind of laughed and he said, me too. Her struggle to heal is the subject of her new book, Between Two Kingdoms. The title of the book is a reference to the brilliant Susan Sontag, who talks about how we all have dual citizenship in the kingdom of the sick and the kingdom of the well, and it's only a matter of time before we use that other passport. But the place that I found myself at was neither. A crippling limbo, especially when it came to love. Which is where that band camp buddy comes in, who kept at it with his music and got himself a pretty good job years later. Hey everybody, welcome back. Say hi to John Baptiste. It was really hard for me to imagine a future with John when I couldn't imagine myself existing in the future yet. What has she given you in terms of lessons about life and love? You have a limited time. Get to it. I think that that is the biggest lesson. Embrace the imperfection. Their history was just what her heart needed to trust again. And at every turn when I thought, you know, there was some aspect of this illness experience that was going to scare him away, he was right there. you like a renaissance woman. <laughs> Suleika Jawad's road trip may have ended, but her journey has not. And she knows that struggle will always be along for the ride. Are you healed? To say that I'm healed uh, would be to imply that there's an end point. And I think healing is something that we all do, that we'll all continually do for the rest of our lives.